Hello, all. Thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar. Um, we'll go ahead and let people get settled in for a little bit, and we'll just get started in a few moments. And if you're just joining us, thank you so much for being here with us today. We are giving people a few more uh, moments to go ahead and get settled in, and we'll get started momentarily. All right, it looks like our number of participants has just about stabilized, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, it is currently 7 p.m. here in Durham, North Carolina, where Duke University is, and we are so excited to have you all here today. My name is Karina Casarrubias. I am a Senior Admissions Officer here at the Office of Undergraduate Admissions, um, and we're so excited to have you all being here for our Real Talk Diversity at Duke Chat, where you'll get to hear directly from current students um, and have some of those questions that you asked uh, during your registration answered. Um, if you can go ahead and advance to the next slide. So just as a friendly reminder, this um, session is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel at the link provided on the screen for you all. Um, and there's also several different opportunities for you to learn more about what it is to be a member of the Duke community through our other virtual programs. Um, as you can see on the screen, there are several different ways for you to learn and explore more about Duke. And if you actually have a smartphone, you can scan that QR code and it'll take you directly to that information on what all of those sessions are. And well, today's agenda, um, we will not be able to answer all of the questions that you submitted, but we will do our best to try to answer those. Um, and we will not be able to answer any questions live regarding admissions, um, specific academic programs, or questions unrelated to student life. If you have questions regarding those topics, again, we highly encourage you to sign up for one of our other virtual sessions and learn and explore more about Duke through that format. Um, so without further ado, I'll go ahead and allow my um, co-presenters to allow to present themselves and we'll go ahead and we'll start with Alyssa. Hi guys, um, so I'm Alyssa. I'm from Gainesville, Florida. I am a junior majoring in psychology and minoring in neuroscience and biology and some things I'm currently involved with on campus include um, two research labs. One is called the Bab Lab and the other is Abbas Connections. Um, I'm also in the Black Student Alliance, Duke NeuroCare, which is a mental health club, and I tutor with the America Reads America Counts at Duke. Go ahead and have Phoebe introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Phoebe. I was born and raised in Argentina, but call Fort Lauderdale, Florida, my current home. I am a freshman thinking of majoring in public policy with a certificate in child policy research. Currently, I'm involved in Duke students as a Snapchat intern. I'm a first year rep for Mi Gente, which is a Latinx organization here on campus. And I'm also a tour guide. Awesome. And up next, we'll hear from Tiger Lily. 
Hi, um, I'm Tiger Lily Kaner. I'm from Kauai, Hawaii. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm majoring in yet. I'm undeclared, um, but I'm really interested in biology and possibly um, health sciences. And currently on campus, I'm involved with NASA, which is Duke's Native American Student Alliance, and also Duke Life, which is for first-generation low-income students and Questbridge, which is my scholarship foundation. So you all were able to submit some questions when you registered. And like I said earlier, we'll do our best to make sure we get through all of them. Um, we'll get a chance to hear from Alyssa, Phoebe, and Tyra Lily, um, their responses and their thoughts on those questions. And Phoebe, Alyssa, Tyra Lily, if there's any place where you feel like you can chime in some more, please feel free to do so. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. So Alyssa, this question is going to you first. Do you have any peer mentorship and or faculty mentorship um, programs in place here at Duke? Or can you speak to any of that mentorship if you are currently taking part of that? Of course. Um, so one of the first things that immediately pops to mind is the Flunch program here at Duke where you can take any professor you want, as long as they agree, um, to go and like eat lunch with them. And Duke actually gives you an allowance to do this. And you can go to the restaurant at the top of our dining center called Western Union and just sit down and ask them about their experiences and their research and anything else you're interested in. So as a student of color or even um, I'm another minority identity, this is a great way to connect with professors that may have the same identity and just ask them about their experiences as they've gone through their professional life or just their personal life if you guys get there too. So that's like a great way. And I loved it when I had the chance to lunch with one of my favorite professors. Um, another way is through your clubs. Um, so like many clubs actually reach out to faculty and schedule like panels with them, even casual chats, just to sit down and ask them about their experiences as well. Um, one that recently happened was through the NAACP they had a coffee chat in the Mary Lou um, Williams Center, which is um, for Black students. It's like a space for Black students. Um, and they were able to just talk with like five of Duke's, like some of their like top faculty and just ask them about their experiences in a really casual setting. And in that way, it like makes them very accessible and it's very casual, very welcoming. And you feel like there's not this, um, like difference in power, it's more like you, you guys are on the same level. So it's a great way to connect with um, faculty and professors here at Duke. And um, as for peer mentorship, and clubs again are a great way to connect with your upperclassmen, especially as an underclassman. Um, and one of the ones that I've heard about a lot from my friends, and I'm sure Phoebe could even speak on this, is within Mi Gente, the family program that they have, um, where you're like assigned a dad and a mom, you like have the siblings, and you guys get to like meet throughout the semester. And I just was hearing about that and I thought it was really cool. And that's just a great way to establish um, community within your identity group. And that is for the Latinx organization. Um, and within other um, clubs on campus, um, they also have similar things. Um, so yeah, there's just many things like that available. And a great thing they also have for past students um, that used to come to Duke is the Duke Alumni Network. So even though they're no longer current students, you could still look to them for like future professional development or even asking them about like just their experiences while they're here. So there's so many things like available for you to just reach out and like get experience and like tips from other students. Um, Phoebe, Tyra, Lily, if you have anything to add, please feel free to unmute yourself. I would say um, one of my favorite forms of mentorship that I encountered, like especially coming into Duke before I even arrived at campus, um, there's Duke Blue Devil Buddies where an upperclassman just signs up and they're like, hey, I want a mentor. And then you um, get an email and they're like, hey, do you want a mentor? And then they can help you figure out what classes are how far away from each other and how much travel time you need to get in between them. And just really nitpicky little things that you wouldn't think about because you don't have the experience on campus. Um, and then also Duke Life for the first generation low income students. They also have a mentorship program, which I found super helpful. Um, they're also really supportive in your transition to Duke as well. 
Yeah, I can speak on both the Mi Gente Family Program and Blue Devil Buddies. Um, my Blue Devil Buddy was the best resource I had coming into Duke. I knew I could ask her questions at any point throughout the summer, and she just definitely made my transition a lot easier. And the Mi Gente Family Program is amazing. We have a chance to meet upperclassmen, kind of get adopted by them. And I know that throughout my four years, I can reach out to them even after they graduate and just always have a relationship with them, regardless of my classes or just my friend group. It's just something outside of that. So it's really an amazing program. Um, this question is directed to you, Phoebe, but again, Tiger Lily, Alyssa, if you would like to chime in, feel free to do so. You all started touching on support transitioning to the Duke community and what that could look like on a peer level. What would you say support looks like in terms of programs from either staff or faculty on Duke's campus? So Duke makes sure that all incoming first years have a smooth transition from high school to college. Aside from just hosting virtual events like this one, to get to know more about the school and the people you are going to be peers with for the next four years, you once you get to campus, you just get flooded with opportunities to learn more about the resources that will be able to help you in your next chapter in life. Um, you are placed in a FAC group, which is headed by your first year advisory counselor, and they meet with you throughout your orientation week to answer any questions you might have about your first year on East Campus or just campus in general. And again, there's the great Blue Devil Buddies program that was recently spearheaded by students where mentors are paired up with incoming students during the summer and they definitely help relieve any anxiety you might have before getting to campus. Thank you for that, Phoebe. Hi, Lily, this question is for you. So on that same topic of transitioning to campus um, and you know being in a whole new environment, how easy was it for you to find your community of people once you got to Duke? Um, I'm not gonna lie. It was a little bit bumpy for me. Um, I graduated from a high school with my class size being only four people. So it was a huge transition from home to here. Um, and there's cultural differences and there's all different kinds of like challenges to navigate. So I definitely, it took me a minute to find community, but that wasn't because there weren't like resources available. The fat groups were amazing. I ended up being really close friends with like all of my neighbors, um, which has been awesome. And then also right at the end of orientation week, I would say, or like the first couple of days of your first week of class, there's an activities fair. Um, that's awesome. You get to walk around and see all the clubs and um, kind of mingle around and meet new people. And like immediate, like I walked past the Native American Student Alliance table and immediately I was just like, oh my gosh, I love these people. And they um, were super embracing and welcoming. Um, so that was really nice. I feel like it's, it's definitely intimidating. Like I was really worried, like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna make friends? But once you like meet your people, it just clicks really easily. And again, Alyssa, Phoebe, if you have anything you'd like to add in, please feel free to jump in. Yeah, I can actually add my experience. Um, so like in a week that all freshmen have, they actually hosted um, a event for black students, faculty, like everyone to just come down and eat like lunch and immediately get to know everybody. So I immediately like met some of my closest friends that I have today, my current roommate, there and through there I was able to get or know about all the different black organizations that they do have here and um yeah like that was my first like sort of push into the community immediately so I was really thankful for that and I believe they also had one that I went to that was just um, multicultural so I also was able to meet friends there that were from different cultures and identities so um a week is very helpful at like just helping you find like your community immediately like even with Tiger Lily, she was like that last day, like she got it. Like, so I think you're a week, you're probably gonna be great. Yes, similarly, I met up with 
all the other Latinos and Hispanics on campus during O Week. They hosted a great reception where I was just able to talk to people from so many different places, but we all had that same connecting feature that I loved being able to bond over with. And I definitely made some friendships there that I know will follow me for a long time. So it's just great. Um, Alyssa, this question is for you, but again, Phoebe, entirely, I think that's like the resounding, feel free to jump in whenever. Um, and this is a two-part question. So we know that Duke does its best to maintain the safety of students on campus, as we've seen through initiatives and um, just currently what's being done now for you know, maintaining the health of all of our students. Um, with that said, how would you say that Duke handles racial issues and systemic racism? And the second part to that being, how does Duke maintain the safety of students on campus? Um, so I can touch on the first part. Um, so one thing that they have um, in terms of, I think, both students and hiring practices is the Off Office of Institutional Equity which is sort of at the forefront of the, the diversity, equity, and inclusion on Duke's campus, which like offers trainings, workshops, and like educational sessions on like key issues related to like diversity, equity, and belonging. And that can include stuff like microaggressions, anti-racism, and of course like implicit bias trainings. And those are available to everybody. So like that's a good way to just like have that available for people to go and like if they acknowledge um, that they do see certain things to just address it and like try to change themselves. So that's one good thing that they have. And of course, a lot of student led organizations also help to like, you know, um, deal with these issues, especially um, the NAACP is a big one. We, I think they recently have like a town hall to like address issues from the students so that they can get to the administrators. So there is an opportunity to actually you know, tell Duke what the students are feeling about the issues that are here as well. And um, recently this fall, we also had the implementation of, um, it's called UNIV 101. It's a class on the invention and consequences of race. And it's actually a really cool class. Um, it's open to all undergraduates um, and it was like graded SU and it counted for like a lot of majors. So that just being put in place, like shows that Duke is acknowledging that there is a ways to go and they're trying to put an effort to like um, address these things. And a big thing that recently happened was, um, and this has been a change that they've been implementing for a couple of years or more, I would think, is just um, changing some of the names of the buildings that have been like problematic and like people in the community have brought up. And one of them is the Reuben Cook building, which is named after one of the first five um, black students that came to Duke. And they just wanted to recognize like um, her contributions to Duke itself, as well as um, just honoring like what she brought to the table and um, the way she changed the university. So they're definitely like putting in effort to make changes here at Duke. And there's always like ways to go, but it's a good start for sure. Um, and then in terms of safety at Duke, um, they do have a lot of like things in place to keep us safe. One of the first things that I personally really appreciate is Duke Vans, um, which is something that is available for students um, if they aren't able to reach a bus or they're like sort of outside or like far, far away from it, um, or they're like out later than the buses are running. They can call the Vans with like no charge. It can hold like four to six students, like if you're with a group. And um, it's especially helpful on weekends when people are out and you know they might not be able to drive themselves. Um, so yeah, they run from like 6.30 to 2 a.m. Monday through Friday, or Saturday, I'm sorry. Um, so it's very, very helpful um, late at night, especially, and I've definitely appreciated it as I've like lived off campus, uh, or sort of off campus this year, and it's been very helpful. Um, another thing I really appreciate as a student is um, the Duke Campus Police, they actually offer like safety escorts at night. So if you're feeling like uncomfortable like walking like if you have a late class or you had a club that like ran sort of late and especially now when it's winter and it's getting dark quicker and you just don't feel like super safe like walking back to your dorm or whatever um they do have police like stationed around like in specific areas of campus a lot of times they're near the bus stops and they're even in the student parking lot if you feel like you're 
like feeling iffy about walking back. So they have that in place. And a big thing is the dorms. Um, they are locked for 24 hours. Uh, they have key card access. They also have security cameras and they have like electric mag electromagnetic um, locks on like certain doors. Um, so like they'll only unlock if there's an emergency. They also like lock the windows. Like it's very, very secure. Like if you're living in the dorm like area. And of course you have like RAs that are, there's always someone on call. So like there's just a lot available for you in terms of safety. Um, and even looking at like uh, gender violence that you see on campus, we have the Women's Center in place if you want to go there and they provide support for those who have been like, undergone that and confidential counselors. So Duke does have like a lot of resources available for safety for students. Yeah, I would say like, especially as a girl, like it's very important to feel safe in your surroundings. Um, and I have like never felt so safe like I mean you know they tell you like don't walk alone at night but like I've never been worried walking alone at night on Duke's campus um like never really been harassed by anybody never really encountered like an iffy situation where I'm like oh like what's gonna happen um there's also like police call buttons stationed like every 200 feet or something around campus and they're like these big yellow towers with blue buttons so if something were to happen just run up and press a button Someone will be there within a matter of minutes to help you. Um, so yeah, I've been very, very impressed with the safety aspect of the campus. And well, thank you both, uh, Tiger Lee and Melissa. That was like a wealth of knowledge. And I think I've learned some new things um, as well regarding safety on campus. To kind of stay on that same topic, um, Phoebe, question for you. What kind of resources, if you happen to know, does Duke have to support mental, sorry, the mental and emotional health of its students? So something that surprised me when I decided to come to Duke was the amount of resources available uh, regarding mental health, um, especially CAPS, which is Counseling and Psychological Services, which just offers so many resources to Duke students such as individual and group counseling that you can schedule with them, as well as something that comes in so handy, which is Blue Devils Care, which is a 24 seven mental telehealth resource, resource available to us. Um, they do advertise that a lot. My RA literally placed this on my door yesterday. Um, and it's just a great resource to have whenever you are just feeling lonely, homesick, like just are struggling, like you know someone's there for you. Um, aside from CAPS, there's also the Wellness Center that definitely started prioritizing mental health in the past couple of years by hosting things such as group meditation and yoga to just help take a break, de-stress, and knowing that like it's okay to not be okay at times, and there's always someone there for you. Staying on that similar um, kind of topic of questions, so, Tyra Lee, I know you talked about this earlier with adjusting a campus, and uh, Phoebe, we talked a little bit about just the support of mental health. Um, so, thinking back to when you first got to campus, Tyra Lee, what student organizations or events um, do you think helped to make that transition to adjusting a campus life easier? Um, whether that was, I know that you mentioned uh, meeting the NASA students, or maybe it was an event or something that um, just helped make that transition smoother? Um, so I would say, like, right when we moved in to our dorms, our RAs had a, um, like, a floor meeting, I guess. So we all just kind of went in the room and did the weird, or in our, our common room, and we did, like, the weird, awkward introductions, like, what's your name? What's your favorite color? Like, that stuff. But then afterwards, there was a giant, like, carnival outside of um, the cafeteria and there was like confetti cannons. There were like bouncy houses. There was a DJ, there was like a dance floor. It was all kinds of food and games. And um, my RA just like kind of drug us randomly to these things. And then all of a sudden she was like pushing us in bouncy houses and um, like forcing the bonds, which was good because now I'm like really close with all of my neighbors. Like we just walk in each other's rooms. Like that's, that's kind of weird, but we definitely do that. Um, and I would say also, like once a week calms down a little bit, like 
Book Week is kind of hectic. There's so many events going on. Um, you're always being like bombarded with information about resources and classes and professors and all kinds of things. But once that settles down, it's really easy to kind of um, form connections with people. Like one of my really close friends, Jada, um, we're both indigenous and we were in Marketplace, which is like the dining hall. And we like saw each other's earrings because like there's a thing where like the beaded earrings. So we saw each other's earrings and we like walked up to each other. We were like, hey, and now we're really close and we're both involved in NASA. Um, so I feel like it's kind of, it kind of falls into place. And yeah, it's a little bit of an adjustment, but it falls into place. Um, thank you all. We're going to switch gears a little bit um, and now talk more about resources and life on campus as a student. So Alyssa, this question is batting up to you first. So what kind of identity and cultural centers um, exist on Duke's campus? Of course. Um, so one, I think I've already mentioned it, uh, but the Mary Lou Williams Center for Black Culture, that's like a space for like Black students on campus. It's pretty close to our dining hall. And um, in addition to being a space for Black students, they also hold jazz nights every Wednesday for everybody to come. So like, that's also a great time to just like meet allies as well as like friends and just chill and vibe. Um, additionally, um, the Center for Multicultural Affairs is in our Bryan Center. And it includes a lot of identity spaces within there. One is um, La Casa, which is, um, where I think me hint it, it's for the Latinx community. Um, so a lot of things like relating to Latinx culture, um, history, just a lot happens there. Um, I believe they are even making, um, they're calling it Week Hit right now, right, Lily? It's, um, it's called Waketh. Okay. But yeah, it's, a, it's an indigenous um, dedicated space in the CMA. It's super awesome. We've got decorations going on. Yeah and it looks super cool. I saw it through the window and I was like, oh. Um, and then they also have um, the Freeman Center for Jewish Life, which is actually its own building. And it's like sort of close to campus. Um, they even have like kosher eating like um, options there. It's like really nice. Um, and they have the Center for Muslim Life. It's like closer to one of our um, Duke apartment like areas. Um, and then I believe we also have the Asian American Pacific Islander space um, in the CMA. So yeah, obviously there are many like different identity groups. Oh, and I cannot forget this one. It's the Center for Sexual and Gender Diversity. And it's on the top floor of the Bryan Center. It is beautiful. It is like the first thing you see when you walk in, pride flags, pride flags, it's great. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of different identity centers here at the Asian American. They're all amazing. Yeah. And Phoebe, or oh, sorry, Tiger Lily, I did not mean to cut you off. Oh, it's okay. There's also, I think it's really, really amazing how supportive all of the different cultural groups are to each other. Um, Mihente had like, not a mixer, but it was kind of like a party in the Bryan Center. And like all of NASA rolled up, like everybody was just going and um, like dancing and it was really fun. So I think it's really amazing how interwoven all of the cultural groups are together. And there's a lot of support um, and overlap in the kind of issues that we're pushing for. So it's nice to have that kind of camaraderie. Like you're a mind reader, Tiger Lily, because I was just about to ask a similar question to what you shared. So Phoebe, Tiger Lily, Alyssa, knowing that you all are involved with different groups on campus, what does multicultural events or multicultural programming look like at Duke, whether that's social or educational? Um, tell us more. And then uh, we can go round robin if you'd like, starting off with Phoebe, then Tyra Lily, then Melissa, if you'd all like to share. So it was recently Hispanic Heritage Month here, which is what I can speak on. Um, it was definitely a party. I will say that we had a blast the entire month. There were so many things going on. We had Latin dance classes, paint nights, showing off like they played in the Heights. Um, which best movie ever. There was a block party that kicked off the entire month for us. And there was a cooking event like over Zoom with like some traditional dishes, which is definitely a great time. And it was just amazing seeing everybody like join in, like even people outside of Mi Gente and the 
uh, LASA, which is the Latin American Student Organization, just like come into the block party, have a good time and just like celebrate with us. So like Tiger Lily said, it's so fun seeing all the different identity groups like just come together and really just like show each other what we are, who we are and just like share our cultures and have so much fun doing that. I guess I can go. Um, so yeah, the social events are amazing. Um, I can talk about like some of the educational things though. Like we have a lot of like many different identity groups and it's often like interwoven too. Like we host a lot of panels where we have like really influential like speakers come and just like talk. Um, and they're always like great. I know recently we had um, a trans woman who was a part of the, I believe the Latinx community come speak um, about immigration as well as like being trans. And that, like I heard that was amazing. And also like, of course the panel, um, the like town halls that we have. Uh, yeah, just a lot of that. I know um, within the Center for Sexual and Gender Diversity, they also host like um, sex ed talks. So there's like, a lot of like educational things as well as like the social that will still get you like integrated within your communities and it's it's always a great time um so this month is native american heritage month so happy nom to everybody um for this month we have like tons of events going on there's beading nights where you get to learn how to make beaded earrings there's guest speakers coming in we have museum walkthroughs at the Nasher and also um, the Duke Powerhouse, I think that's in, I think it's called the Powerhouse. Anyway, um, there's that going on. We've had alumni come and speak, all kinds of stuff going on for Native American Heritage Month. I would say my favorite, like one of my favorite aspects of Duke is just like being able to come together and celebrate each other. Um, it's, it's so beautiful to see and to be a part of. And yes, I can't wait. Oh, also we have a powwow in the spring. So we're starting to plan that now. It's gonna be super exciting. We're gonna have um, all different kinds of dancers come in and we're gonna have, it's part of also like the Native American student fly-in. So, um, you know, guests that are coming in to see the school will get to um, kind of view the powwow and see what we have going on. So super exciting to see um, the diversity grow and the celebrations evolve on campus. I really, I feel like you're two steps ahead of me today. The next question I'm going to ask you, um, similar to what you just shared about your identity and, and feeling of belonging. So what about Duke's community initially made you realize that your unique identity was welcomed here? Like specifically me? Okay. <laughs> I would say just like the immediate feelings of warmth when you come into contact with people. Um, the activities fair, I walked by, there's a um, Native American sorority called Alpha Pi Omega that I'm looking at and they were at the activities fair and Gianni, who's the president, I, I love her so much. She was um, tabling and I kind of like saw the booth from afar and she saw me and we I walked up and she was like, hey, and we were just kind of chatting and then she immediately, could kind of tell I was nervous and she was like listen nobody's going to tell you what your identity is you are who you are and your identity is safe here and nobody's going to define you or try to limit you because you look this way or you act this way and um it was just really amazing to be seen so quickly um yeah I'm not gonna cry but it was it was a really a really special moment Alyssa and Phoebe, if you would like to answer that question as well, when did you realize or what happened that made you realize, okay, my identity, like I'm safe here, I'm welcomed here, I belong here? Um, so like, I think it was a few weeks after a week my freshman year, um, the Black Women's Union had like a sit down with like all the like women who decided to come and just like had us ask questions to them about like their experiences with their majors like just their personal lives and everything and it got to a point where we even had like a cry session and we had a lot of similar experiences even like in college and high school and just like hearing like their struggles and things that they found to like um things that they persevered through while they're here and like advice was just amazing and i like 
appreciated that up to this point. And I actually got to attend another one recently and it was just as amazing. Um, but that was definitely the moment that I was really like, I just felt comfortable and I knew that I had a community here and it made me like, yeah. Um, for me, it actually happened not too long ago. Um, I was interviewing to be the first year representative for Mi Gente. And one of the questions was like, why, why do you want to be this? Like, why do you want this job? And I told them like straight up, I said, I just want to be able to walk into La Casa, which is in the CMA and not be scared of like being either too white to be considered like a part of the group, but also knowing that there's like people who feel the same way, even though I just have so much culture within me that I want to share with others. And the person that was interviewing me broke down and was like, I am so happy you said that because I've been feeling this way for such a long time. And we definitely need something to change in the way we see some cultures and the way we accept other people. And if that's what you want your purpose to be as a first year rep, then you do that. You take that upon yourself. And I did get the position. So I now I can say I proudly walk into La Casa knowing that I am not only 100% accepted for who I am and for the stories I have to share, but also that I can make that difference for future students and for students who are still at the school now. Awesome. Thank you to the three of you for sharing that those stories. Those are always so cool to hear um, how students are you know, connecting with others on campus. One more question regarding programming um, and just centers that exist for students. Alyssa, this question I think you might be able to answer. Um, what kinds of programs are there to help LGBTQ plus identifying students feel included and accepted on campus? Of course. So of course I talked about um, the Center for Sexual and Gender Diversity and they themselves like host a lot um, of like education support mentoring and like a lot of programs and like um, events for um, people within the LGBTQ um, plus community. But there's also this club called the Blue Devils United, I believe. Um, and it's like a student run like organization for like both allies and members um, of the LGBTQ plus community. Um, and they're like a lot of times like who I see like hosting like kickbacks, painting sessions, um, and they are the main ones that host the sex ed sections. Um, I think that's an ongoing thing that they host. And I know they even had like um, a performance at like an event where they had different performances of like um, queer faculty students and the exec board just be, like come out and they even have a peer mentoring program within that as well. So there's definitely like people here like for you if you identify with that group and Pride Month also is just amazing here. It was great like walking um, in the Ryan Center like plaza and just seeing everything there and they even um, had a march on campus too. So you will definitely be like accepted if you come. It's wonderful. I would say also there's um, gender inclusive housing. If you don't feel comfortable in whatever kind of dorm, if you want specialty, specialty housing for also disabilities, um, there's a lot of options. Um, also, again, just like celebrating people on National Coming Out Day, there were like, again, confetti cannons, like the whole Bryan Center was decorated in like rainbows and flags and they were giving out posters and um, it was really beautiful again to just see people being celebrated in their identities. Thank you, Alyssa and Tyrelli for sharing that. Um, Phoebe, one more question for you. You've talked about Mi Gente, Lasso, being able to connect with the Latinx community on campus. What other opportunities do um, exist or are there currently on campus to connect with Latinx community members? So those two organizations are definitely your go-tos. I will say that um, you will find your place there regardless of your path in life. They will welcome you with open arms and will listen to your story. Um, they definitely, their main purpose is to make our culture known and to have our stories be heard. Um, there's just always 
something going on in there in la casa which we share um we're just very proud of who we are and we like to make that known and nothing will ever stop la son mi gente from doing that um aside from just celebrating ourselves <laughs> um we are just a very big family of people and like i talked about at the beginning the family program great amazing love every single part of it i love that i have people to look up to and to go to with questions but also just like knowing that outside of my own little family there's other families that i can go to um and just in general it's a very safe space la casa is always open to study even though i don't know how much studying you're gonna get done in there because it's always a party um and there's always someone's shoulder to cry on which is just great i love being able to talk about my own feelings that might not resonate with some of my friends just because of my background but i know that as soon as i walk in i will find someone to talk to and they will understand and listen to me which is amazing Thank you, Phoebe, for that um, response. The next question is for you, Tiger Lily. But again, Alyssa, Phoebe, feel free to jump in if you have um, a different perspective. So Tiger Lily, do you find that the professors on campus are respectful of the identities of their students? And are they receptive to feedback if something is said incorrectly or if there's room for growth? Um, I would say that everybody on campus, students included, always seem to be very open to conversations about diversity, especially. Um, and there's always room for growth. So like occasionally I'll be in class and someone will say something like one of the students, not, I've never really heard anything from the professors that I was like, whoa, but every once in a while, a student will say something um, that isn't like the most, like it might make someone uncomfortable in the room and the professors are always very quick to be like hey like um you know we have to make sure that we're using wording that's safe for other people um and i've also like personally um i identifying as I, indigenous there's been times um that i felt like my identity wasn't necessarily at, known by most of the students um or like a couple of the students and sometimes they'll say things that they're not really sure whether or not it's appropriate because they just haven't been taught before um and there was one specific instance that that happened in my writing class and the issue was taken care of really quickly the teacher like i told the kid hey i didn't you know that wasn't appropriate to say didn't appreciate that and um the teacher was like hey like you can't say that and then he apologized to the teacher after class and wrote me an email and we had a meeting um and sat down and worked it out and i think just kind of holding that space for people to be able to learn from their mistakes is really important um instead of just like canceling people like i don't really think that that provides the space for growth so it's nice that um there's a space for the discussion of especially like racial diversity um yeah so i've been very impressed with that because i know that things will come up but it's good to see that it's being handled in a way that encourages growth for everybody um, I've only been at Duke for one semester, but all of my professors have made it a very inclusive environment. Um, something that does come to mind is my Italian professor. Italian is a very gender specific language and it dates back a while. So there's not really a non-binary option when speaking, but the Italian program here at Duke made sure to include a non-binary option when learning vocabulary and learning gender specific vocab um which i as soon as i sat down the first day i was like wow this is not something i would find anywhere else um so i love that they most of my professors or all of them this semester have made sure to make it a very inclusive space um for everyone from all walks of life Um, thank you both for sharing that. Um, additionally, on a similar community strand, um, so Duke is located in Durham, North Carolina. Um, and wondering in what ways do students connect with the larger Durham community, whether that's through 
Um, we know there's service learning opportunities for Duke students to engage in, but also thinking of other communities that, or in other venues that students can collaborate with the larger Durham community. And that can be um, any open to the three of you. Okay, well, I can speak on something I'm currently doing right now, which is um, I'm an AR, or America Reads America Towns tutor. So we're able to like work with the Durham Public Schools and like just like collaborate with the kids and like help them out with like all the educational needs. Um, and that's been like really great because like in the process of um, helping them, like I'm learning about the kids themselves and like I'm getting different perspectives and like learning about their backgrounds. So that's amazing um, as a learning experience for me. But then also um, with NeuroCare, we were able to go um, to the YMCA and like teach them about the brain. Um, and these are like elementary students as well. So like there's, yeah, especially in clubs, there's great like opportunities to go out into the community. And I love working with kids. So like there's an abundance of that and it's amazing. Um, I know two things that Mi Gente is doing or has done is um, from a political perspective, we are we helped with the local election, just getting people registered, knowing where to vote, how to vote, everything. And then we helped out at a vaccination drive for getting the flu shot recently in the Durham community and just helping translate and making sure everyone knew where to go. Um, I'm also involved with LEAP, which is an organization here in Durham. Um, which connects Duke students or just students around the area with elementary school kids. And I love my little child. I loved being able to just connect with her in a different level. And aside from just reading books with her sometimes over Zoom, um, I have definitely seen a difference in the way she has grown over time. But also most importantly, something that wasn't a very impactful thing for me was talking to her mom and her saying that she was so thankful for having Duke students help out in these situations, especially people of uh, Latinx like origin and people who spoke Spanish because she was never able to fully talk to her child's teachers and communicate about her issues. Um, until we kind of she kind of joined leap and was able to get these opportunities so it was just so nice knowing that there's a partnership with duke and the durham community that goes beyond just going out and exploring durham but also just helping the durham community in itself yeah i would say there's also um there's a lot of volunteer activities and opportunities um to get involved with the community politically or academically or socially but there's also just a lot of overlap in the Duke social life and like greater Durham, like people are always going to insomnia down the street and getting cookies. Or um, if you wanna walk to Harris Teeter and get groceries, you're always gonna see like seven people in a Duke hoodie and maybe you'll get an Uber back together. Like there's always um, Duke people in the Durham community. And I feel like the Durham community is also very ingrained within the Duke community. So that's also really nice to see the, um, the interactions between the two. Um, we did get one ch our question in the Q&A that's similar or on the topic of what we're discussing now with those interactions with the big Durham community. Um, knowing that we're located by, or like in the triangle, by two other rival schools, um, what does the support and community feel like? And did, Or sorry, let me backtrack a little bit. Does the support and community um, that you feel when you are on campus, do you feel that same presence and that same connection when you go off campus? Um, I would say, especially regarding the other schools, interesting little fun fact about me, my older sister went to UNC Chapel Hill. So my entire family is split on the basketball thing right now. Don't really know what's gonna happen, but um, I would say that there's a really big overlap in the Chapel Hill community and the Duke community, especially in the Native American students. Um, they have an Alpha Pi Omega, the Native American sorority, also on Chapel Hill's campus. And um, we're always like going to each other's events or calling each other for help or just um, 
you know, like sometimes we'll meet up for lunch. It's really nice to have that kind of camaraderie with people that aren't necessarily like right next door, but they are right next, like they're like 10 minutes down the road. Um, so that's really nice. And it's also a fun competition because you can kind of poke at each other. Yeah, I can speak on like a similar thing um, for, I guess like the D9, the fraternities and sororities, I'm not personally in, but I have a lot of friends who are. And there are a lot of like other like black students that come from like um, NC State and even like UNC, like just all the schools around UNC and they'll come and like to the same block party and they will all like do their strolls, which is like a staple of like the D9, like um, for brats and sororities. So like in that moment, like you, it's like just a big old like identity space for everyone to like feel welcomed and like feel like, you know, our culture is like, we're just vibing and it's great. Yes, I would agree. All of our communities kind of merge at some point in time or every weekend. Um, I know this weekend, UNC and Duke and possibly NC State, um, like their Mi Gente style organizations are all hosting a mixer, which is just going to be so fun and exciting seeing everybody else. And it's all benefiting Unidos, which is a scholarship between the Latinx organizations in North Carolina. So we definitely come together in that aspect, just helping fundraise and organize fundraisers for that. So it's really fun just getting to know people outside of the Duke community that aren't the same like culture and heritage. I would also say something that's really cool is that you can take classes on, I don't know about NC State, but Chapel Hill, you can, um, there's buses that drive students back and forth. So there's exchange and knowledge also, like you can take a Chapel Hill class if they have something more specialized that you're interested in. And you also get to meet Chapel Hill kids on Duke's campus because they're also getting to do the same kind of exchange. So that's also really cool that we're also connected academically. There's one more question that came through in the Q and A and I'm curious if any of you would know the answer to, would you know, um, specifically regarding Pratt, what does diversity look like, especially regarding gender? I would say I'm not in Pratt, but all of my neighbors, well, like half of the floor that I live on um, is girls. And I would say like a really surprising amount of them are in Pratt, which is re also really beautiful to see. Um, like get it women in STEM, goodness. Um, so yeah, like three of my next door neighbors are in Pratt and they're killing it and it's amazing. I can also speak to that. Like um, my one of my closest friends is in Pratt and then through her, I met a large group of not only women, but black women and Latino women, Latino women who were in Pratt. So like that was also pleasantly surprising because you don't always think you'll see that. So even though you don't expect it, it's definitely there and it's wonderful to see for sure. I was about to say, I was not expecting that when I came to Duke, especially in such a male dominated field, um, but I am surrounded by amazing, intelligent women who are in Pratt from all identities and they're really they're really pushing, they're really going through it. But as long as, you know, they just keep working, they keep doing what they do. They're just insanely intelligent and they're everywhere, literally everywhere. My entire floor is Pratt actually. And I was just surprised by the amount of them because I always, again, always had the mentality of that, of there weren't that many people like women in engineering, but when I came to campus, I would start talking like, hey, what's your major? Oh, mechanical engineering. I was very shocked and good for them. Good for them. <laughs> I would say there's also just a lot of women in STEM in general, which is really amazing. Like my chemistry class, there's, I'm kind of, I'm in a smaller chemistry class this semester. There's maybe like 60 kids in the class. There's like five boys. Like the girls are really killing it in STEM this year. I don't know how they are every other year, but this year, especially, I know my class is killing it. So very proud of the women in STEM. Woo. Well, I'm looking at the time. And before I ask the three of you this final question, I just want to say thank you again for the wealth of knowledge that you all have provided today. And so last, but certainly not least, I'm going to take you back in time 
to when you were deciding on where next and thinking back to why did you choose Duke? What, what compelled you? What was it that drew you in that you just knew this was the place? And we can go um, Alyssa, Phoebe, Tiger Lily. Okay, so my story actually started when I was in like, I think it was eighth grade. Um, I got started with Duke through their talent identification program, which is like, it's no longer happening, which is really sad, but it's like a way for you to like go to, um, I went to Appalachian State my first year, but a lot of, they have like different locations at different campuses. And um, you basically have like a summer camp that is technically like a little taste of college. So we got to take like a class and it was sort of on a college schedule while also like doing a bunch of community events. Um, there was a lot that we did, but it was so great that because of that, I was like, okay, Duke, I have to go there. Like, this is just the place like for me. I, like, Cause because of the like community that I found there and the like people I'm still in contact with to this day. Um, but then as I got closer to my senior year, of course, I started thinking of other things that were important to me um, and that I needed to consider. Um, so like coming here, I will admit I wasn't initially going to look at Duke because I didn't think like my interests were truly here. But because I was visiting another school in the area, I came here and it eventually blew them out of the water. I was just like in love with all the opportunities that I saw available for me, especially in research. Um, but also knowing that I wasn't completely cemented in what I wanted to do, just seeing all that they had available was really attractive and made me feel like I had room to explore my passions. And that's like what truly brought me here. And also the campus is like really beautiful. So that was like the nail in the coffin, especially living in Florida where I don't get to see seasons, seeing the leaves and snow for the first time was amazing. So yeah, I love it here. <laughs> Um, I also found Duke through the Duke tip program my eighth grade year um, and again absolutely fell in love with it I was like I'm gonna come here a hundred percent I ended up touring my junior fall and something that I noticed as soon as I stepped foot on campus was the like overarching feeling of community and friendliness that was radiated from the people walking students were just actually smiling at each other, which you can't really see now because of sometimes masks, but they were stopping to catch up in the middle of the quad, which was something that I absolutely loved being able to experience because I was looking at a school just that went beyond the academic aspect of it. And that actually felt like a tight knit community, even if it's a mid-sized research institution. And that's something that I found at Duke. Um, I loved being able to see people smiling, people talking to each other, catching up, seeing their professors walk past them and them knowing their names, like the professor knowing you by name was something so special and something that I hadn't really found anywhere else. So I'm so glad I ended up here because now I am that student that's smiling in the quad and trying to catch up with others and saying hi to my professors. I would say that my story is not as cool as your story is. <laughs> um, my older sister went to Chapel Hill and she was telling me one day, she was like, oh, I have a friend and her younger sister goes to Duke. And I was like, ha ha, wouldn't that be funny if I went to Duke? And then, um, and then when I was in my 10th grade year, um, I got to come and visit Duke's campus with my grandmother and one of her friends. And her friend like bought me a t-shirt and the t-shirt was outrageously expensive. Um, why I don't know why the bookstore has to be so expensive, but I was like, I really don't need it. And she was like, yes, you do. You need this t-shirt. And um, she bought it. And then I like saw some really cute squirrels. And so I was like, okay, like, I guess I'll apply. But I had like, I did not think I was going to get in. So it was kind of, um, I ranked it first choice early decision um, on my quest bridge application. And then that was also partially because I'm scared of cold. I was like, we're not going to Brown. <laughs> like that is, I will just die. Um, and also the cafeteria food looked really good. So anyway, ranked at number one and we got in. So I didn't really have a choice after that. Awesome. Thank you all again so much, Tyra Lily, Phoebe, Phoebe and Alyssa for sharing your stories. And thank you all again for joining us today being part of this amazing panel. I'm listening to what they had to say. Um, again, we encourage you all to stay connected with us through our social media sites at Discover Duke, 
um, and just engage with us there and learn more about what it's like to be a student on Duke's community um, and as well be, take part in all of our many other virtual offerings. Thank you all again so much and have a great rest of your day if you are still in the earlier time zones or a great evening. Thank you all. Bye.